Oh, yeah, um, I'm Rhiannon and I'm from The Gamer. Hi. Hi, Rhiannon. Hey, lovely to meet you both. Um, thank you for giving us time. Is the right way to jump straight in? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so my first question is for both of you. Um, with Fallout, you're working on a series that p- fans have like, absolutely adored for more than two decades. Has that affected how you approach uh, like, with everything about production, uh, perhaps differently than you have with other projects? No, I, I've got some experience working on things that are that are beloved. <laughs> and so I think the, the key is to work on things that you love. And if you approach it as a fan then and, and treat it with reverence and, and respect. We were lucky in that between me and Graham, Geneva, the showrunners, and, and many of the people who worked on this show, some of the actors and, and, and many of the crew, knew and loved the games. And, and I think that enthusiasm and passion for the games hopefully is felt in almost every frame of the series with that fan base comes that when anything is said about this whenever there's a trailer whenever there's like the first scene that we got to look at uh people are picking it apart and there's a lot of, there's a lot of scrutiny um were you kind of expecting that when you decided to you know um make a fallout show yeah sure but we're, we're used to that whenever you're working with something that has an existing fan base and that's that's part of the fun you have so many people who are so excited about it it's important to not judge the work before you've done it to play it play it like grown-ups play it for grown-up stakes and do it you know honestly and with a sense of reverence maybe that's too strong a word but honor the honor your work honor yourself by honoring your work um and obviously you're hoping that that really comes through in the final product and fans will see that there was that sort of reverence for the source material, but also just what you wanted to do and add to this book. Yes, that sounds right. Um, and lastly, I-, I was speaking to Howard coming from pr- production, and he was telling me about how quite early on it was decided that, unsurprisingly, there would be a minimal amount of CGI used on them for that show. Um, was that more difficult when you're working with a video game where it's all just been, you know, virtual for? however long we can remember it. And now you've got to recreate it for the first time in live action. No, it was one of the advantages that we had. We knew that we couldn't win in a battle of computer graphics with Bethesda, right? These games are so beautiful and there's so much work that's gone into it. And in fact, Bethesda were incredible collaborators who sometimes send us pieces of sets or props directly to us in, 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 in 3D files that we could print or pull straight into our volume. We knew that we weren't going to win trying to do computer graphics. And frankly, I've, I've never enjoyed that approach uh, you know, our approach is you pack your carry on, you get on a plane and you fly somewhere that, that, that transports both your cast crew and hopefully your audience into that environment. We have an incredibly talented cast. We could put them in front of blue screen and they would, they would be able to, to make you feel something. But when you've taken the trouble and made the pains to take them to Namibia or the Western Salt Flats of Utah, it frees them up to to reach for something else in the work you know the, the awe is real for all of you in that space and hopefully for the audience as well hi um i'm rhiannon and i'm from the gamer hi how are you nice hey. to meet you hey lovely to meet both of you um i have a question for you each uh i'll go with ella first if that's okay uh, it's not okay it is okay don't listen to them <laughs> thank you very much and so uh from the very first episode, uh, in your first fight scene with the the dress on, I saw that and I was like, "This is my character in a Fallout game. This is like every female character that I'm making, looking perfect in a very impractical dress, but still like kicking people's asses." I have to ask, is, did you feel like a video game protagonist in that moment? Um, you know, th- there's like a moment with the dress and she has this armor on and. And, it, you know, barefoot with the chaos surrounding her. And I really did. I was like, whoa, this is going to look really cool. This is a crazy show. Yeah. But I will say, not that practical because you're stepping in blood, you know, and, and, and your feet are cold. There's broken glass everywhere. I would just say wear shoes if you ever find yourself in that situation. Flip flat especially not high heels yeah flip flops maybe not flip flops maybe like a a, a trainer or a, a, a pump flip flops it might be distracting me like you know you try and distracting <laughs> um on the completely other end of the scale uh aaron you got to wear power armor um that's 
a little bit more practical. <laughs> so um, I was talking to Howard over at um, Direction Design, and he was telling me that a big thing is they wanted the uh, power armor to be practical. I have to wonder if you got to wear it like actually in the scene or with some person, and if you did, how practical was it to move around in? Oh, yes. Um, I wear, uh, our stunt performer, Adam Shippey, wears the full, what we would call, I guess, the hero suit. I mean, this thing is, he's seven foot six or something crazy in this thing with the big, you know, stilts that he's basically walking on. It's, it's remarkable. Um, I get to wear what is like the top half of the suit. I mean, there's like a bunch of different like iterations of this thing to bring it all to life. Uh, and how practical is it? Well, ways about 50 60 pounds um so for the first like 15 minutes i think like yeah this is cool i got this look i'm moving my arms and i can dance and then uh you know 20 minutes have passed and i'm like why did i do all that dancing uh (laughs) this is really heavy and i'm exhausted uh so it is it's uh it, it moves it moves well enough you know what i mean uh for us to to get what we need out of it for shots but you know, there's some elements to it. The rising visor, you know, I can't control myself. It's someone with a joystick on 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 the sidelines. So we had a good moment where we uh, were in a scene together and I needed the visor to close so that I knew that I could stand up then. And then it just remained open. It was, it the, was, longest like, it was the longest pause of, 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 of maybe the, 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 you know, the cue can't be heard from where the person's standing far away out of sight of the camera and... You know, we're shouting things like close visor as if that's the cue to do it. You know what I mean? Well, it was really great time working with such a such a amazing practical element to, to this world. Um, and I guess this final question, um, if you have to pick one, if are you fighting in a big puffy nineteen fifties dress or all the power armor? I mean that's not a fair question. It's obviously the power armor, it's the coolest thing in the world. I was gutted I didn't get to wear it. It's the coolest thing. It never, honestly, never gets old watching it. It's amazing. What about you? Would you want to? Would you want to fight in a wedding dress or a power armor? What does the dress come equipped with? Petticoat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> power. Could you utilize the heel somehow? Sat on with it. No. Uh, yeah. Maybe my mobility might be a little bit better. Yeah, mobility is really bad. It's not as heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you'd have a bit more freedom, wouldn't you? <laughs> Perfect. Um, I better not keep you for too much longer, but thank you both so much for your thank time. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, I'm Rhiannon and I'm from The Gamer. Hi, Rhiannon. How do you do? Hi. Hi. It's lovely to meet you. Pleasure. Hopefully. <laughs> yes. Um, is it okay if I jump? Yeah, please. Please do. Perfect. Um, thank you so much for taking, uh, giving us the opportunity for this. Um, I would like to open by just asking how much did you know about the world of Fallout? for taking this role and if you didn't know much how did you immerse yourself in the weird and wonderful world of fallout it is a wonderful world no i was not that familiar with it when i started um but i did by my research online uh attempted to go into to play and recognize immediately that this is a much bigger deal than i anticipated or thought of so i read about it talked to people about it um really followed the blueprint of the script um, and enjoyed that experience a lot and um, reading about Lucy's journey through um, not only the vault but into the wasteland. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it was just, it was like, it's a, it's a new environment, a very complex, um, well-designed, um, you know, you feel like uh, where the two worlds, you, our world and the world of Fallout, kind of coexist it's uh it feels very realistic and um, of course through twin peaks and twin peaks the return you're absolutely no stranger to taking on more out there roles and more out there environments to immerse yourself in yeah but even with that experience especially working with david lynch um has was there anything about the world of fallout maybe one of its creatures one of its characters or even your own role that made you go oh that's on unex- yeah, I think really a, the most unexpected part of it were the, was the the shift in tones, the unexpected shift in tones, which not so dissimilar that to what um, David Lynch does, you know, where you juxtaposes 
um, something that appears to be really delicate and sweet against something very harsh and 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 abrasive. And that was the case in in Fallout because you do have these very violent, uh, ultraviolet moments, um, and then you're playing kind of a sweet song, you know, over the back of it. And you, you, your brain kind of does a disconnect. You're not quite sure which path to follow. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I find that intriguing um, and kind of creates almost a third reality to what you're seeing. You don't really know what it is. It's an amalgam of everything. Um, and I find, I find that interesting. Yeah, that's a definitely a great uh, way to summarize what the, this world is, the juxtaposition of it all. Um, especially, I hate to stick with Twin Peaks, but fan of both that and fallout that's all right great opportunity for me um but uh as playing the overseer you are the the head of the vault something that's on the surface of it looks like you know picture perfect a rustic americana yeah obviously we find out quite quickly that's not the case um but every all games have done something different with the vault uh, the show's kind of trying to tell its own story with the vault um what kind of themes and satire do you think are being explored with the vault that you are the overseer of? Um, well, you know, it is that kind of um, a naive, uh, the Americana, um, the, um, the community, um, how, we, how we survive best as a community and we support each other, um, which are values that I think um, are important and are actually believable and... Uh, because I do think that as a as a, a humanity, that the community is really going to be the most important thing, and I I I think the expectation or what the vault dwellers believe is that everyone that's on the surface is in sort of some kind of a rogue nomadic single person. You know, everyone's on their own. But in fact, there are these communities um, of, of of extremes that do exist. And then you realize that, that that's a common thread that the, the vault dwellers as well as the surface dwellers share is this need as um, this need as as humans, as people to come together to form a group. Um, and out of that, we 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 only will survive if we are a group like that as groups. So it makes sense to me. That's a very beautiful way to sum it up. Thank you so much for your time, Kyle. Oh, my, thanks, Rihanna. Nice to talk to you. Hi, uh, I'm Rhiannon, and I'm from The Gamer. Nice to meet you, Rhiannon. Nice to meet you both. Um, so I have questions for both of you, but uh, if I could open, I'd like to jump right in with Geneva, if that's okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so um, from the first episode, uh, as soon as we introduced Felicity, I immediately connected with her as uh, a female fan of the Fallout franchise for so long. I immediately thought that this is the kind of character I make all of her many, many, many faults. Um, and I was wondering if that was a conscious decision to, because I think often in video game adaptations, it seems like male is the default. Was it kind of a conscious decision to say, like, the player standing, as it were, is going to be a woman this time? Well, it's a great question. We we honed in very, very early that we wanted to have three main characters. We we, we both love the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and uh, we love that it gives you uh, three different characters to relate to. And of course, such a big part of the games is these different factions and these different worlds that uh, characters you like come from. Um, and so we wanted to do a vault dweller, a member of the Brotherhood of Steel and a ghoul. And we knew that. And, um, you know, to be honest, uh, part of it was just like, you know, they weren't all three going to be dudes. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, but um, uh, we we did feel like... Um, uh, Lucy, I think what's important to us about her her journey is that uh, it's a coming of age story, um, and she's you know starts out a tiny bit almost like uh, maybe a, a hint at self righteous in how pleased uh, with herself she is that she comes from a, a moral a moral place right she comes from this vault where everyone prides themselves on doing the right thing and um, we were excited to see that challenge when she went to the wasteland and felt real deprivation uh, and desperation for the first time. Um, and this one is for I want to use. I'll bring us to Graham. To be fair. Um, so um, when it comes to adapting people out, I think such a big part of it is um, it politics, it's satire, yeah. and I think some people were a bit worried that that wasn't going to translate into live action, or maybe that part of it would be left behind. Um, is that something you reflected on a lot 
when it came to writing the story. Yeah, I mean, well, if we've learned anything from online discourse is that some people will worry about everything. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, there there's factions, ironically, of people who are worried the show will be woke and uh, whatever that word uh, means these days. Uh, and factions of people who worry it won't have the sensibility of the original games, which were really, uh, you know, peak 90s ad busters, you know, anti-corporate energy and uh, the fact that it's being made on Amazon.com might give people pause. Uh, for us, it was uh, part of the appeal is just the absurdity of that, that we get to tell a story about a world that uh, bet big on mega corporations and uh, it collapsed and put it on Amazon. Uh, it's too delicious for words. Uh, so, yeah, I think the entire premise of uh, Fallout is satirical in nature. And uh, if we just, you know, play that with the, even with the straight face, it's still the, the satire is baked into it. So, um, but yeah, to we definitely went into this project eyes wide open that we weren't going to please everybody. Um, I don't even know what that would look like. Something that pleases everybody. I, I've yet to see such a thing. Um, so, uh, we're, we're just, uh, ready for the, the factions, uh, fallout fans to go to war with each other and for the nobler factions among them to try to make peace. It's all very interesting in how vividly it replicates the world of the games. Um, and just very quickly, um, the show also introduces a lot to, it doesn't just adapt, it introduces stuff to the world. Can you see that being carried forward into the games? That's what I've already used. That's That's Todd's call. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, that'll happen uh, over there. Um, we would be honored and stoked and uh, uh, if, if they pulled stuff from our show and put it into the games uh, because we've borrowed so much from Bethesda's catalog of great ideas uh if we get to have our own influence on their work hot dog that'd be cool 